Keeping safety front of mind is all about communication. Welcome to the Farm Safety Roundup, a podcast series focused on important conversations to help keep farmers, their families, and their workers safe. Farm Safety Roundup is brought to you by the agricultural team at Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. With today's timely topic, I'm your host, Sean Haney. Let's get to it. Welcome to another episode of the Farm Safety Roundup. You know, there is no shortage of work to do on Canadian farms, but there is a shortage of workers to do some of the work. It's no secret there is a a critical labor gap in in the farming sector really across the country. The seasonal and physically demanding nature of farm work and honestly a host of other issues make these positions so difficult to fill. I, I hear it from our audience all the time when I'm out giving speeches. That's why farmers across the country turn to temporary foreign workers during some of these peak seasonal periods. Jay Remzik is joining us today on the Farm Safety Roundup. In his role as health and safety consultant with the Workplace Safety and Prevention Services, Jay is highly regarded for his expertise and a strong advocate for the ag sector. His experience on the farm started early. He was uh, doing some corn detasseling, as every uh, good farm kid in southwest Ontario, at the age of 10. There's an important distinction between a temporary worker and a temporary foreign worker. So let's start there. You, you may have a few days' work that requires extra help that may come from a temp agency, or you, you may hire longer term. Temporary foreign workers, you would you would have them for the entire season. Jay, what is the difference in terms of employer responsibility? And and and, and talk about due diligence. Yeah. So with the employer responsibility regards to whether it's temporary workers or temporary foreign agricultural workers, they need to ensure that there's training provided uh, to those workers, that those workers understand what the, their duties and responsibilities are uh, when they're going to be on the farm. Uh, both uh, worker responsibilities as well as who is the supervisor they're going to be reporting to. So with with respect to some of the training requirements, even if it is a shared responsibility, like going through the regular things like orientation on site and things like that, that sounds like it'd be pretty critical. Yeah, and this is where it gets very difficult in regards to whether I'm using or the employer is using temporary workers or temporary foreign agricultural workers. Uh, I find that with temporary foreign agricultural workers, uh, the employers, as you had mentioned uh, earlier, uh, are bringing those workers in for the season. Uh, And those workers are going to be with them on the farm for the entire season. And it's a little bit easier for the employer to provide that type of training. Uh, the issue becomes when the employer or the farmer needs to use uh, a temporary help agency or temporary workers, where that worker may only be at the farm for, let's say, one day. And who is responsible for the training? Uh, so some employers that I've worked with, they're ensuring that that training is being provided to that worker or worker that day. Or they're reaching out to the temporary help agency and saying to that uh, agency, We need to ensure that this type of training is being provided to your pool of workers prior to them arriving on on the farm or at at the operation. Uh, Oftentimes, I would think there would be a language barrier here, depending on how far away people are coming from and and where from. How, How do you effectively address this? Yeah, so there is an issue with the language. Uh, and there's there's been a lot of employers that I've worked with over the years that uh, they've reached out uh, and uh, acquired a translator uh, to ensure that that uh, that training right is being provided in the in the proficient language uh, of that group of workers that's coming in. Uh, other resources that employers can use, and we've seen this uh, more and more over the years, is uh, international pictograms. Uh, so safety uh, pictograms in regards to pinch points route points, you know, fire, chemical, uh, that it's, it's international and they can make sure whatever that those workers understand what the hazards are, uh, when they're going to be uh, on the farm or at the place of employment. Is there any help here from some of the local colleges or universities? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I actually had a, a client uh, reach out and they were bringing in workers from uh, Nepal. Uh, and it asked, does WSPS have uh, re- resources in that believes? And I said, unfortunately, we don't. And her challenge was, 
well, where could I, uh, where, where could I access uh, those types of, uh, of resources or someone that possibly speaks that language? And I had uh, mentioned to her uh, to reach out to the local university uh, or the colleges uh, where there's uh, international students that uh, possibly could be looking for some extra work uh, in regards to uh, translating in, in, in the native language of those particular. Uh, really cool. Okay, so with so much to learn about, you know, today's world of agriculture, and then you've already addressed the language barrier, it kind of feels like there may be a bit of a information overload. Uh, how, how do we address this? One of the things that I've recommended to employers over the years is to uh, break it down into three components. Uh, the must-knows, uh, the should-knows, uh, and the could-knows. Uh, as you just mentioned, uh, there could very well be an information overload that if an employer is trying to, uh, you know, teach uh, those particular workers everything uh, about the farm. Uh, so let's teach them the must. What are the general rules and procedures when I'm on the farm in regards to personal protection? Uh, where are the, uh, you know, the emergency protocol, uh, the marshaling area, uh, the first aid kit, the eyewash state? But if the employer or the farmer has no intent on letting one of those uh, individuals or those workers operate the tractor, then why are we training that individual on the tractor the very first day? It could be as simple as telling those workers, uh, unless you've been formally trained on to operate the tractor, you will not touch the tractor. You will not assist another worker uh, in, in, in operating. The tractor. So that could kind of move into a, you know, a should know. Maybe if that worker is coming back, season after season, or if I am using the, uh, you know, the temp, temp, temporary agency and the worker is returning for the past uh, couple of weeks, then maybe that's something whenever now that I'm going to give them that hands-on training on how to operate uh, the track. And then that way, the individuals are not uh, inundated with that, as you alluded to, that information. Yeah, have some, in, have some intent to your, to your training program, right? Like you can really manage that process to uh, avoid some of that information overload for for sure from a from a helping out the situation in in terms of you know, it sort of i think of like you drop a kid off at college right <laughs> you try to find them a buddy like you 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 uh you're trying to make them feel as comfortable as possible in a very very unfamiliar environment so on the mental health side and just the overall you know personal utility of the situation. What are some of the things that we can do to make this situation much more easier, even away from work for, for the TFW? The two-way communication uh, from an employer standpoint, uh, making sure that the workers understand that if they do have an issue or a concern, uh, whether it's uh, health and safety related, or maybe they're just feeling, uh, you know, despair, uh, that they're, they're away from the, their family, uh, that they can go and talk to the employer. Uh, one client in particular, and I remember them telling me this uh, a couple of years ago, uh, that when they're bringing in their temporary foreign agricultural workers, and they have those workers that come uh, back year after year, uh, but then they have uh, you know new new individuals, that this is their first time in Canada coming to work on the farms, um, that they ensure whenever that within the bunkhouses uh, that those individuals are, are, are spaced out. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is that there was one of the more seasoned uh, temporary foreign agricultural workers that possibly has uh, returned here for the past uh, five or six years. Uh, they're acting as a mentor uh, to, those no, to do, those new workers uh, and kind of showing them the ropes and letting them know that um, they are there uh, for them, that if they have any issues or concerns, they can also speak to that particular, uh, that particular person. Yeah, I, w I would think also like the, you know, we've all heard the concept of management by walking around, like, you know, checking in with with some of the workers as well, that, that regular dialogue that to to me would also go a long ways to making people feel as, as, as welcome and as a part of the team as possible. And for those employers that are doing that, you see that over the years that, uh, you know, those workers are returning year after year uh, because they not only look at them as workers, uh, but the employer is looking at, looking at them as a part of their family. Uh, they've been coming back uh, year after year, and and those workers enjoy coming back to the farm and do have that open dialogue with their uh, with their particular. Yeah, this, you know, the TFWs are a, a critical 
supply of labor and, and getting things done on the farm in Canadian agriculture and making sure that uh, food ends up on the plates of, of Canadians and, and abroad. A very, very important resource in in our industry. You know, Jay's done a, a series of helpful videos to answer some of the most important questions re relating to temporary workers and temporary foreign workers. There's also a resource to help you called Save Time and Money. Create training videos with your own smartphone. That is uh, produced by WSPS.ca. You can find it and a whole bunch of more resources by going to WSPS.ca slash farm safety. Jay, thanks a lot for joining us here today on the Farm Safety Roundup. Thank you, Sean. With agricultural expertise to help keep farmers, their families, and their workers safe, Farm Safety Roundup is a podcast series produced by Real Agriculture with the team of ag specialists at Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. Go to the website wsps.ca slash farm safety. There you're going to find free health and safety resources. And you'll also be able to check this episode's show notes for information on the topics discussed. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time to talk all things farm safety right here on the Farm Safety Roundup.